Hey, I don't typically make videos about events in the news, um, but this is a kind of a special case. Um, those of you who know me know that I'm a big proponent of free and open source software and that I have in fact been contributing to Linux-based software applications for a very long time. So tonight I'll, I'd like to help uh, you understand the context and the reasons why you should help the GNOME Foundation make a stand and fight off a patent troll uh, in the court of law. Uh, this is something that concerns basically everyone who cares about technology, software freedom, digital rights. Um, so, so here's some context. There's uh, this wonderful free and open source photo management application out there called Shotwell, which uh, I have on my computer here. This is what it looks like. Um, and uh, I, I use it. It has been around for over, over 10 years. And I use it to sort, rate it, and publish the photos I take at various uh, conferences. So it's a really nice application. And you know, Shotwell was initially made by people at the Yorba Foundation, right? And um, Shotwell was always free and open source software. They were, uh, the, the Yorba Foundation people were the ones who wrote it and they were the ones who listed, were listed at the cup, as the copyright owners. And when the foundation shut down its activities, they had to find a new home and a new copyright holder uh, for those projects, such as Shotwell and Gary and, and other projects. So they reassigned the copyrights to the Software Freedom Conservancy, uh, it, which is a public charity. And then they have the code and the infrastructure hosted by the GNOME Foundation, which is another public charity. Now, fast forward a couple of years later, um, the GNOME Foundation is being targeted by a patent troll company, uh, Rothschild Patent Imaging Limited Liability Corporation, or company, for the simple fact that the GNOME Foundation is hosting the code and, and they are basically, the GNOME community is maintaining and shipping the Shotwell code. Um, and we can see the news here about the Grom Foundation uh, having to face a lawsuit. Uh, that was a month ago, and now we see um, another piece of news where it is uh, very clear that the Gnome Foundation decides uh, is, is planning to fight this. Um, so, This, this is, this is a, a pretty crazy situation, really, um, but it's not unheard of. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the patent in question uh, is, is referenced. You can find it uh, pretty easily. Um, this is the patent that... Uh, Rothschild is complaining about. Wireless image distribution system and method. I mean, even the title should tell you how, how ridiculous this is. Look at how intentionally vague this is. The cl they claim that it applies basically to any photo software that has the ability to upload to the internet. Uh, and, and I mean, technically, Shotwell does not have a wireless distribution system, per se. Um, and you would be actually, well, technically, you would be hard-pressed to find a way to plug wires into Shotwell. It's software, you know, it doesn't have wires. Um, so, but the, but the thing is, since it's, it is graphical... Um, a photo editing software and it runs on a computer and it has internet upload uh, ability 
the computer's operating, si operating system can use a wireless network to throw bits over the internet. And so they claim that Shotwell infringes their patent. It's, it's just so ridiculously broad. I'm not even bothered going to bother uh, trying to describe it further. Uh, you, you can check it out yourself um, if you want to laugh or cry. Um, and I mean, you have to remember that software patents are nonsense to begin with. It's basically the same thing as patenting math formulas or poetry. Um, so then consider the fact that, you know, a rectangle selection, you know, when you click and drag the mouse and do a blue rectangle, that's patented. Double click is patented. Single click is patented, arguably. Uh, I'm pretty sure that right click is probably patented as well. Pretty much anything you can think of is patented in the software world. Um, so basically everyone, every company in the industry who is not a patent troll is using software patents the same way nuclear power was used during the Cold War. Um, that is, a mutually assured destruction deterrent. Um, a patent troll, on the other hand, is a company whose entire business model revolves around filing bogus and vague patents with the goal of doing extortion by threatening to sue companies and organizations about those vague patents. So in the case at hand, Rothschild Patent Imaging LLC is targeting the GNOME Foundation because they thought GNOME you know, would be an easy target. Well, you know, let me tell you that the GNOME Foundation is not the kind of organization that will let itself get trampled over by a patent troll. It's, it's got a community, it's got the partners, uh, and the determination to fight as a matter of principle. So, I mean, notwithstanding the fact that this alleged patent infringement case can be pretty much dismissed quite easily by provi providing examples of prior art that, invalid that would uh, invalidate the patent, you can be sure that the foundation is going to go the extra mile and fight off the patent troll without any mercy. Because we really need to make it clear that free and open source software communities are not going to be bu bullied and abused like that. Um, and, and for example, a couple of years ago, I was on the board of the directors of uh, the GNOME Foundation. Um, let's see where I have uh, some piece of news here in some old news. Um, and, and the GNOME Foundation was being challenged by Groupon. You know, the Groupon, a big company with 10,000 10, employees and $3.2 billion in annual revenue. And, and back then, Groupon had registered 28 trademark applications. So not the same thing as patents. We're talking trademarks here. Um, and those trademarks were infringing on Gnome's trademark because they wanted to name their product Gnome. And it was in the basically the same industry. And so Gnome had to defend this trademark. It was forced to fight because if you don't defend your trademark, you lose it. So, so Gnome fought. Uh, it, it started a public campaign about it. And you know what? We won. Um, you know, Groupon thought that we wouldn't have the guts to fight them. But the foundation raised enough money and sparked so much outrage that Groupon was forced to back down and actually take us, the free and open source software community, seriously. So, you know, you will say, okay, wait a minute, Jeff. Some years ago, you were the president of the GNOME Foundation. How can you possibly not be biased here? And you would be right. I am biased to the extent that I care about GNOME, obviously. Uh, obviously enough to 
be prompted to make an argument about it uh, and to make a video at night and post it on my channel um, and on my blog. But hear me out here, and, and I will say this quite frankly. GNOME is part of the free software and the free desktop community. And it's fighting to make software that makes us all more productive and secure in our daily lives. And when it comes to patent trolls, you cannot say, well, this does not concern me. I don't use GNOME or something. I mean, even if you don't use GNOME or even if you don't, you don't like GNOME software, um, you have to keep in mind that this company and every other patent troll company out there is watching this case closely because this is kind of a first here. And they're watching with keen interest because it's basically testing the waters and they are thinking that we, the free software community, are wimps and that we will just pay the ransom money because, you know, we have a foundation, we can pay the money. That's just easier than fighting a court battle, is it? Um, but the thing is, if we don't end their subversion tactic here and now, they will continue. They will continue to do this to GNOME, to other charities, and to other free and open source software projects. Basically, anyone with who seems to have a little bit of money, they won't care. They're going to attack them. Or it can be used for, you know, um, preventing stifling innovation. It's been done before. So here we are. This, this is a fight that you should care about. Um, and this is why with this video, I'm hoping to encourage you to, you know, you, you may want to donate to the cause, to the cause, uh, but you also want to share this piece of news um, with everyone around you so that we can raise awareness about the issue. And that's it, really. I mean, I just wanted to, to give you a little bit of context. I hope this explanation made things easier to understand. Um, give it a thumbs up if it did, uh, if it was helpful. And um, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.